Uh, this week, we lost a huge opportunity in the U.S. Senate to extend bargaining rights to our public safety members. As most of you know, currently it's up to each state whether there's any opportunity for bargaining for public sector workers or not. And more than half the states in our country don't even provide an opportunity for collective bargaining for those who work in the public sector. It's particularly disgraceful that first responders don't have any opportunity to bargain collectively in states like Texas or Oklahoma or Mississippi or West Virginia or Virginia or Utah. And this week, 55 senators, a majority, voted to put a bill on the floor that would provide minimal bargaining rights in every state unless the state itself provided benefits at a higher level. In every other democracy, 55 out of 100 senators would be more than enough. The vote was 55-43. But our Senate, operating under rules that resemble the Senate of Cicero in ancient Rome, not the Senate of a 21st century democracy, requires that under those circumstances, a motion to proceed needs 60 votes out of 100 on the floor at that time. And so this bill, passed several times by the House, never got debated in the Senate. The bigger question is this, for all of us in CWA, number one, at least 20% of our members are Republicans, and that's their right. But they need to understand that the Republican Party of these days, of 2010 and 2011, will oppose in a knee-jerk fashion any bill that extends bargaining rights to any workers in this country, led by the National Right to Work Committee. And so we need our Republican members, particularly those who are public safety officers, to say to their elected officials, where does this hatred come from for us as first responders and as working families in this country? Where does this hatred come from? The Republican Party of Jerry Ford and others supported bargaining rights. And now, in a knee-jerk fashion, you oppose them at every turn. And secondly, for all of us in CWA, independents, Republicans, and Democrats, we need to continue to press on to build the coalition to say to the U.S. Senate, we've had it. We've had it with a Senate that operates in this way. We've had it with a Senate that, can't, that doesn't take up 420 bills passed by the House, and now they die at the end of this session. We've had it with a Senate where the senators value more their individual ability to raise money and therefore their own individual ability to block bills than they value the kind of legislation we need to be a 21st century democracy. We've had it. We do have a path. We're building a broad coalition of democracy groups like Common Cause, environmentalists, civil rights groups, and others who realize that for the majority in this country to be able to elect senators and pass legislation for the common good, we must focus on changing the Senate rules when the new session of Congress convenes in early January. So for, for all of us, we need to get our senators on board. Are they going to support democracy or not? And particularly for public safety officers, and particularly for those of us who are Republicans, we need to let those Republican senators know that their knee-jerk reactions against collective bargaining will not be tolerated. They've trampled on our rights. They've trampled on the standard of living of our families. And they need to be willing to walk in their shoes as correction officers, in many cases at near poverty wages, and now with no hope to change that. And they need to look us in the eye and explain why, at every turn, they vote against working families in this country. We will fight on.